In this video, I'm going to show you every camera feature on the Galaxy Note 8. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you, and today we're specifically talking about the Galaxy Note 8. Now first, some of the features may vary depending on the carrier you have, as well as the country that you live in, and most of these features will also work on the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. So let's dive right in. The very first thing is you can quickly get to your camera by pressing the power button twice. So all I need to do is tap, tap, and there it will open in the camera. Now if your phone does not do that, make sure you select the settings, and then go down here to the bottom where it says quick launch and turn that on and then it will quickly go into the camera. Now very first we're going to start up here. Now this is in landscape. This all will work in portrait as well. So we're going to start from the top right here. So this little icon that is how you can go to the front camera easily as well as back to the rear camera. You can also do that just by swiping up on the screen as well as swiping up again or swiping down. Now the next option here is to change the frame size from the four by three aspect ratio to the full size of the phone. So if I tap that, it has now displayed the camera on the entire screen. So this essentially is cropping the image. So you're not gonna get as high a quality image when you do this, but you will get a nice widescreen shot. Next, you have the flash option. So if I select flash, that is going to turn on automatic flash. So it will decide when it needs to turn on flash. Here we have a well-lit room. It didn't need to turn on the flash. Next, we can tap it again, and then the flash will be on. So when I tap the flash, it will then of course flash with the picture. And then I select it again, and it will turn the flash off. Now next at the top, we have the settings. So if we go into the settings, let's go through these real quick. First, we have the picture size. So here's where you can adjust the size of the pic. Like I said, this is a four by three picture. Well, if you open that up, so here you'll see that you have some different sizes. So here is four by three at 12 megapixels. Here's four by three at 6.2 megapixels. You have 16 by nine, which is a wider aspect ratio. So if we select that and go back into the camera, you will see that it takes this wider shot. So now whenever you take a shot, you will have that wide screen picture. If we go back into the settings, we can adjust it back. And if you wanted to take a square photo, you do have the one by one there. And here's where you can turn on the raw option. So it will save a raw file and a JPEG file. Raw is helpful because it's an uncompressed picture and it allows you to do more editing on the back end. So we're gonna go back. Next we have video size. So on the Note 8, you have full UHD. That's a 3840 by 2160, so it's about 4K. Then you have the QHD the full HD at 60 frames per second. Then you have the normal 1080, which is FHD. And then you have the other aspect ratio, which is the 18.5 by nine, the square one by one. Then you have regular HD and VGA. Now here it is saying that if you use the UHD, QHD, FHD 60 frames per second, you will not have the HDR video effects and auto tracking. So make sure that you are aware of that. Then if we go down here, we have tracking autofocus. So that means that when you are taking a picture, you can tap on an object and it will follow that object along the screen wherever it moves. Next, we can turn on a timer. So if we open the timer settings, we can then have it go two seconds, five seconds, or 10 seconds. So once I select the timer, then when I take the photo, it will then start the timer. Next we have HDR. So HDR stands for high dynamic range. So this means it's gonna take multiple photos and take one that has a high brightness and a low brightness and merge them together so you get the best of both worlds. So here you can turn it on and you can turn it off. So here is the auto setting. And then here it is with it off. Now next you have settings for the front camera. So this is the selfie camera on the front, which is an eight megapixel. The back is a 12 megapixel camera. So here we can change the picture size as well. You have four by three, 16 by nine, 18.5 by nine, as well as one by one. Then we can choose the video size. It will go up to QHD on the front. Then you have full HD and the other options there. And again, it will not use the HDR and video effects on the front camera when you are using the higher quality video. Then we can go down here and we have save pictures as previewed. So this is where it will flip the camera if it's not rotated correctly. So sometimes you will see a picture and it's showing the image correctly, then you take it and it's reversed. Well, if you enable this, it will then make it so that it shows up properly. 
Next, we have shooting modes. Shooting modes allow you to tap the screen to take a picture. You can show you the palm of your hand to snap a photo. And then here you can tap the heart rate monitor to take a photo. So let me show you how to do those. If you are in the camera and you're in the front camera, here we just hold up our palm and it will see that and it will take a picture. Next, we just place our finger on the heart rate monitor. Once it sees a face and you let go, it will take a photo. And then we can just tap and that will take the picture as well. Here we have the timer and the HDR settings as well for the front facing camera. Next, we have motion photo. Motion photo adds video right before you take the photo. So about one second before you snap a photo, you will see motion. So if we turn that on, so here we have the Batmobile going through and I snap a photo. And when we go and review the photo, we can actually see here, it says play motion photo. And we can see that it shows that video before we took the photo. And then if we do that again, we can actually scrub that. So I can go through and find the exact moment I want to capture a photo. And then I can select capture up there. Down here I have the play option and then I have the delete. So I can just select play and we can see that little animation there. It's kind of fun to have that uh, beforehand. Sometimes I've caught some pictures of my kids that I would have never seen if I would have turned that option off. Next, you have the video stabilization option. So that means that when you were holding the phone, it's much better stabilized and so it looks much more crisp and clear and uh, not so shaky when you're using it. Here we have grid lines. So you can turn the grid lines on or off, uh, three by three or a square. The three by three allows you to see kind of where you're positioned. So when you are taking a photo, make sure that you have your subjects in one of those lines and you'll have a much better photo. A quick pro tip is always clean the lenses. That way you'll have the best clear photo. If you ever see that your photo is completely washed out or there's some bleeding on the edges of subjects, make sure you clean your camera. That will fix the problem. Now here we have location tags. So location tags automatically tag a GPS location of the photo. So when you go into the gallery, you can actually see where your photos were taken. Check out my gallery video in the pop-up to see how to do that. Next we have review pictures. So once you snap a photo, it will then go straight into the gallery where you can see that photo that you had taken. So next we have the quick launch settings. That is where you can double tap the power button and go right into the camera. Now that will work when your screen is off on the lock screen or on the home page. Anytime, double tap and it will quickly jump into the camera. Next we have storage locations. So when you first put in an SD card into the phone, it will ask you if you wanna change the storage location to the SD card. But here, if you wanna change it later, you just tap there and it will say SD card or device. Now when you do use burst shot, I'll show you that in a second, it will only store it on the device. Next you have voice control. So voice control allows you to take pictures just by voice. Capture, smile. Next we have the floating camera icon. So the floating camera icon is this little icon right here. So that will float around the screen and you can move it to any part of the screen. And then you just need to tap it to take a picture. So it makes it easier when you're holding the phone, you can easily tap it with one hand instead of reaching to the center of the screen. Next we have volume keys functions. So when you press the volume key right now, it's going to take a picture. If you open this up, you can have it record a video, zoom in or change the system volume. So I really like the ability to record a video so I can do that underwater. So now whenever I press this, it's automatically going to start recording a video. And then when I press the volume again, it will stop recording that video. And then the last setting here, you can reset all the settings to the factory default. Now let's change this back to four by three and we are going to head towards the bottom of the screen. So the next option here on the Galaxy Note 8 is the times two. So is what this will do is it changes to the other lens and it zooms in times two and this is an optical zoom. That means it's not digitizing the picture at all or zooming in so you can have a closer image. So you can easily turn that on and off. That will not be available on the S8 or the S8 Plus. Next we have Bixby Vision. So Bixby Vision will allow you to take pictures of certain items and then it will tell you more about what you took a picture of. So here if I put up an object and then select image, it will then go through and try to figure out what that object is. Here we can see that it found other BB-8 objects and we can see that it did find this Sphero as well. 
Some other things that you can do with this is to scan QR codes. So if you hold up a QR code, it will actually take you to the link of the QR code. Now down here, you do have an AR option. So this is augmented reality. That means that when you go into this, it's going to look around through Google Maps and see if there's any other locations nearby that it can find. Now here, I do not have any locations close by, but it's really great that you can look around and quickly see if there's any place that you would like to eat close by. When you are in Bixby Vision, you do have the option to turn on the flash in case it cannot see the object or the picture you're trying to take or the items. And then here you can check your history as well as go into the Bixby Vision settings. And so here it can look at images, places, wine, text, QR codes, and then you have a few other general settings right there. To get out of Bixby Vision, you can either select the back button or the arrow right here on the left side of the screen. Next is the second feature that is only available on the Galaxy Note 8 called Live Focus. So Live Focus uses both of the cameras and it's able to give you a bokeh effect with the camera where the background is blurred and the foreground isn't focused. So once you tap Live Focus, it will then tell you if Live Focus is ready or not. Now, depending on how close you are, so right here with these toys, we are a little bit close, but it's giving us that option. You may need to back up or get a little bit closer. It's great to be about five to 10 feet away from the subject. So it says Live Focus is ready. And right here, we have this option where we can intensify the blur in the background. So there you can see that the TV is blurred, but if I turn this down, the TV no longer is blurred. So we're gonna turn this all the way up and snap a photo. Now, when we look at that photo, we can see a few different things here. So if I zoom in, you can see that the background there is blurred, but everything here is in focus, and then the TV is blurred as well. We can actually adjust the background blur after we've taken the picture. Here I can turn the background blur off and I can increase it as well all after I've taken the photo. One other cool thing is since it has those two camera lenses, it can actually take two photos at once. So here it took the close up, and then if we select wide angle, we can see the full shot even after we have taken the photo. I really enjoyed being able to have that so that you have both photos that you can look at and save and use whichever one comes out best. Here's another example of one that I took outside. So here we can go and adjust the background blur. If I turn off the blur, you can see that the cars are in focus. And then if I up the blur, it gives it that really nice effect where here Adele is still in focus and it's very crisp and clean around her where the background is blurred and it gives you that really nice bokeh effect. If the subject is too close in live focus, it will tell you that it will not be able to take the photo. Here it says live focus not applied to shooting conditions. So then you need to make sure that you are either further back or change the situation to see if you can get live focus to work. Now, while you are in live focus, you do have a few options over here. We can increase the size of the picture. So there it goes to the full wide screen. And then this other option right here is where it will save that close up and the wide angle shot as well. So if I tap that, it will turn off taking both of those photos at once. Now to exit live focus, you will need to just select the back button or you can press the button down there. Next, let's head on over to stickers. So stickers allow you to use filters just like Instagram or Snapchat. So here we can just select a filter. It will automatically put it on. And when you open your eyebrows or open your mouth, it will do different things. So here we have a few different ones. You can scroll through this list and find all kinds of different filters that you can add. And then there's also some things that you can download. So if I select the plus right here at the bottom, we can go and download more and you can even buy more. And if you wanna remove the effect, you would select remove effect. And then here you can go through where you can add some different items to the screen. So here we can add best friends, tap, move that around. We can e increase the size and change it. And then when you have this photo, you have this awesome photo of Bruce Wayne. So there are the stickers. Here are some of the other filters. Come on, Bruce, open your mouth. Open it. Oh, there we go. Put on some sweet glasses. When you use these filters, it can be applied to three different people at the same time. What's up? While you are using the filters, you can take a picture as well as do video. Next, let me show you how to take a picture. All you have to do is press this white circle and then it will take a picture. But the cool thing is if you wanna zoom in, you just hold down and drag up or down on this and that will then zoom into your photo. That's really handy when you're using the phone with one hand. 
Now to take a burst shot, you can just hold down on the white button and it will take up to 100 pictures in a few seconds. It will not save any of those pictures to the SD card. Then you can go through and browse the photos and it will find the best one that it took. So there you can go through and find the exact moment in which you want to see the people flying through the air. They, of course, probably will be a little blurry. Now, when you want to take a video, you would just tap the video icon. Now, to stop the video, you just select stop. So one cool trick is before you take the video, if you want to make sure that you are set to the right aspect ratio, you can hold down the video button and there it will show me what the video is actually going to look like. That allows me to then adjust so that I can take a video of exactly what I want to see. Then when you take the video, you have a few options here. So when you are not on the full HD quality, you can actually snap photos while you are taking a video. Down here you have the stop and then here you have pause. So this is great, just like an old video camera when you would stop it, start again, the video just keeps going when you replay the video. So here if you're taking a bunch of different shots, you can select the record, hit the pause, and then if you wanna record again, you just need to tap that, it starts recording again. So you can keep doing that. I do recommend that once you are done taking your few shots, make sure you select stop so that the video ends and your file doesn't somehow get erased. Then down here with the Note 8, you do have the times too. So if I wanna zoom in during the shot, I can then quickly zoom in so that I could have multiple angles essentially while I'm recording the video. And then I just need to select stop and it ends the video. And of course, the last option here is to go to the gallery. You just tap that and it will then go into the gallery and you can watch your beautiful pictures and creations. Next, I wanna show you some of the extra settings that you have. So I already showed you how to swipe up and down to change from the rear camera to the front camera. If we swipe left, we then pull up our filter options. So here I can quick and easily change the filter live so I can adjust how the camera would actually look and take the picture. So here we can select setting and maybe there's one of these that you like more. You can actually drag and place it in the order that you would like it to go into. And then here down at the bottom we have the plus where we can add or download more effects from the Galaxy App Store. So here it's showing a few different effects that we can get and we can easily download those. But if you swipe to the right, here we have our different settings. So right here it is showing the auto mode. So the auto setting allows you to have the best picture possible. It's automatically going to choose that for you. If you wanna get further into what the camera is doing, you can go into the pro mode. Now the pro mode allows you to adjust quite a bit. Here you can change the way that it will focus. You can have it focus on the center. You can have a matrix focus. You can adjust the flash and everything. You can make it do the widescreen. You can swap to the front camera. But over here is where you have all the extra settings. Now I don't know too much about photography, but typically if you just play with these one at a time, you can see what each of these settings will do. So here we can adjust the white balance depending on you know what you want it to look like. We can change the Kelvin scale so you get all that. I can set that to auto. Here we have autofocus. So if I wanted to zoom in on a certain part of the photo, so on the Note 8, when you're using the manual focus, it will actually show green around the object that is in focus. So that makes it really handy to get the best shot possible. And with this, you can zoom in and get a really nice macro shot. So you can quickly adjust what it is focusing on there, or you can get a far away shot. Then here you can select your filters again. You have all the different filters there. Here you can adjust the aperture so that allows for more light to come in or less light. And then down here, you can select the ISO. So if you know much about cameras, that's really handy to have to be able to take all of those photos. But I'm just gonna swipe back. You can go back to auto. Now the next option is the panorama. So with the panorama, you can start taking a photo. You start the panorama and then you pan as smooth as you can to the other side. Now you can make this a really long panorama or really short, but here, try and stay in the same spot when you are taking this. So now we have finished that panorama. We can see this really nice long shot. 
And you also have this option to play as motion. So then it will show if there was any movement happening while I was taking that video, you would be able to see that right there. And you can save that as a video and share it as well. But if I zoom on this, you can see the really nice crisp photo that it took and uh, really nice to have. So that's great for landscapes and all sorts of photos. Now the next option here is slow motion. When you record slow motion, it is best to have lots of light. And then we stop and when we review the video, here we have the slow motion icon. We tap that and then it will automatically figure out where it needs to go into slow motion. And here it can do multiple slow motions in the same video. And then if you want to adjust where it is slow, you can come in here and get very fine tuned in where it actually slows down and where it speeds up. And then once you are done, you would want to select share or save, and then you can also mute the audio on the video. Next, we have hyperlapse. Hyperlapse is really cool. I use this a lot while I'm driving so that you can quickly see the scenery and it's a very smooth motion. So if I just play around here, or your kids are doing whatever, when you record a hyperlapse video, it essentially is fast motion. So it's the opposite of slow motion, where here if I'm walking around, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. and then when we play that back, it's a very quick video. Here are some other examples of where you can use hyperlapse. The next setting here is food. So food focuses on the center of the screen. You can see that it focused right on the very center and then it blurs the rest and it really makes the center of the screen very vibrant so you can have a really nice photo. So here you can adjust the water droplet effect. You can turn that on and off. Here you can also change the color of the photo so you can get exactly what you are looking for. Next we have virtual shot. This allows you to capture a picture of something 360 degrees and it's kind of like a little Harry Potter effect when you play back the photo. So here if I start taking a photo of Wreck-It Ralph, I would need to walk around him to get the full effect. So here we're gonna try and do this. So there as you walk around the image, you'll be able to see it and you can play it back and forth. Here's another example of virtual shot. So when I click play, it will then show you that you went around the object and you can scroll back and forth and go around and it's like a video that you can move around. And you can share that as a video as well. Next we have rear camera selfie. So, so rear camera selfie allows you to hold the phone and look at the rear camera. That's because it's the best camera, the 12 megapixel. And then when you position the camera and it captures your face, it will then vibrate and it will automatically take the photo. So you can see if I move around, it's automatically snapping the photo without you actually having to press the capture icon. You can also move this box around so that as soon as you enter into the box, that is where it's going to take the photo. Next, we have sports mode. So sports mode means that when you are doing something fast and you snap the photo, it will snap it without blur. So here we can go in and uh, while it's a little blurred, it could have been a lot more blurred. So let's do a uh, auto. So there you can see the difference where here Luigi is really blurred and then here it is not as much. And of course, it is subject to be different on life size subjects. Next we have animated GIF. So to record the animated GIF, you need to hold down on the camera button and then it will record different frames of that GIF. And when you go back to play the video, there we have created our little GIF animation. And then last here we have the download option. So if we go into the download, there's a few other things that you can get. Here I did have to get those three 
from the Galaxy App Store. So if you don't have those showing up, you can find them there. When you are looking at the different camera options up here at the top, if you select settings, you can select edit and that will allow you to drag these around and put them in any position that you would like to see. Then you can also add shortcut to home screen. So let's say that you always want to have slow motion available. If we open that up and then maybe you want pro mode and we select done, it will add those as shortcuts to your home screens. So if we go home and then go to our blank page here, we can see that pro mode and slow motion is available. So now when I tap on slow motion, it's gonna take me right into the slow motion settings that makes it super easy to get to exactly what you want very quickly. And then here we have some more information about the settings and what they do. Next, let's head into the selfie camera. You're mostly gonna be taking portrait pictures with the selfie camera, so I'm gonna use it in this way. But if you're using the rear camera and taking a video, please make sure that you're using it landscape like this. That's the best way to take a video. All right, so here in the selfie camera, you do have a few of the same options here. We can quickly rotate the camera. We can do the swipe up again. We can do full screen mode. So here it is full view. And you can see there, that's how it zoomed in where I'm actually cropped now from the bottom. And when I turn that off, you can see me as well. Next, we have the flash. So right now when I take a picture, there's no flash. But if I tap the flash, it will turn on auto flash. Again, it's good lighting in here. So there's no flash. But if I then turn on the flash, there it will actually flash the screen. And so you can see that it has brightened up the screen a little bit. And if it's in a little darker situation, that is very helpful to have. Now these are the same setting that you had on the front camera, but here you can go in and turn those on and off depending on what you want. And here I have my floating icon again, where I can easily take a selfie right there from the side of the screen. So that's really helpful on the front. Next, you have Bixby Vision. So this is the same thing that we saw on the front of the camera. When you tap that, it will automatically go to the rear camera and start Bixby Vision. Then here we have this little icon. Uh, it's those three little stars. When you open that up, this will allow you to adjust some settings on the camera that you do not have on the rear camera. So next, let's talk about this setting right here with the three stars. Now, previously, this was called Beauty Face, but on this phone, you open that up and you have a bunch of different options. So right here, let's start with skin tone. So if I turn this up, you can see that my face quickly gets more polished. So it's like blurring out any blemishes that I may have. And if you wanna turn that on and off, you just go up and down. Next, we have the spotlight feature. So here, we could highlight a certain part of our face. So in the video, this left part of my face is a little too dark. So we can then turn up the brightness and then you can see that it brightens over there. And we can shift this to the other side of the face. So you have those settings right there. Next, if you wanna slim your face a little bit, you can do that as well. So there you can see it's uh, slimming me around the cheek area. Very handy to have when taking selfies. So I'm gonna turn that off and this is really handy to have, large eyes, so let's see. So leave a comment below if you see my eyes get larger. And then last we have shape correction. So sometimes when you are near the edge of the screen, it will distort your face a little bit. So this face correction allows you to fix that. So you can see that it kind of adjusts there um, depending where you are at on the screen. So sometimes when I'm taking a selfie and my face or somebody's face is near the edge, it will get a little distorted. So shape correction allows you to fix that. So that is how you can adjust all of those selfie settings. Now, if you wanna go back, you just tap on the screen or wait a second and that will go away. Next, we have the stickers here. So stickers, same thing that we saw on the rear facing camera, you can turn on a sticker. And then when you open your mouth, it will do certain things. So I know you all wanted to see that. Uh, here you can be a seal. Oh, there's even sound. So you can go through, check all those out. There's some pretty cool ones here at the end. Oh yeah. And, uh, oh, that's a sweet one. You hungry, you can eat some noodles or you can say happy birthday, all right. Next, let's throw on some glasses here. So we saw Bruce Wayne already do that. You can put on some hats. And again, you can have three people doing these at the same time. There you have the different characters. You can add the items on the screen. You have the same options where you can adjust, put that where you want. 
And then you can also go into the settings and adjust where those are located. And you can click the plus to download and find more. Here it looks like we have some Olympic stickers that we can put on. So let's download those real quick, check those out. Those have now been added. So if we go back into the stickers, here we can see that it has added those and we can quickly show that, uh, oh, these are sweet. Woo! All right, so you can have a lot of fun with those. Um, and that is how you use all the stickers on the front facing camera. And then again, we have the same options. You can do the burst shot right there. You can tap to take a photo. There's no zoom on the front facing camera. If you wanna record a video, you have the same where you can hold this down and see what ratio it's gonna be. And then when you let go, when you tap the button, it will give you all the options here. We can pause, stop, as well as snap a photo. And then when you tap the screen, you do have this option right here, will increase the brightness or tone it down. So that's really handy in some of the situations. And then up here, we do have autofocus where we can select the autofocus or you can tap to focus on a certain subject. That's a really handy option when you are ever taking a photo. Make sure that you tap on the screen where you want it to focus before you take a photo. That's one of the things that's made money of my photos look very crisp and clean and it focuses exactly on what you want it to do. So there you go. That is all of the camera settings on the Galaxy Note 8. If you guys have any further questions about any of these things, you wanna see them more in depth, please leave a comment below. And if you'd like to see more about what you can do with the Galaxy Note 8, please click the pop-up on screen. And if this is your first time here, I'd love to have you subscribe so that you can be notified of my new and upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.